Okay, so you know what? Young people? They're messed up. I mean, I know, like, what is it? March 16th of 2023? I know that, like, human beings are very selfish. Just kind of naturally. You know? Like, if the shit hits the fan and everything shuts down, hydro goes out, and you no, know, there's no water because the hydro's out, and people go into anarchy, and you know, that's when you really start to see the bullies come out, right? But, like, you know, that me generation, right? You know, me, 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 me. I mean, it's been around forever. That's nothing new. But, I don't know, people. I got Tisha telling me she wants to leave the country. I've mentioned this before. Because she doesn't want to live in Canada and be in poverty. Okay? Right? She doesn't want to... She figures if she, she goes, I don't know where she plans on going. I kind of have an idea, but you know, I said, like, what, well, you going to abandon me? I'm going blind for crying out loud. Oh, well, you got to travel when you went out of the country. Eh, live somewhere else. I said, you know, I said, no, I never left the country to go live somewhere else. Oh, well, you were in Alberta. I said, that's a different province. <laughs> <coughs> I said, you said you abandoned Mari? Oh, I can't. I don't want to be in Canada. I already told you as soon as I leave this apartment, Alex and I are thinking of leaving the country. I'm like, okay. Like, as if things can't get better, right? Well, I've got some, some sort of, I don't know, morphodite running through my yard with something eating at her brain. You know, with her me mentality, doing what she's doing, like this is what I mean. Like young people, like they're I don't know what I don't know what they they're fucked. They're fucked. I know with with my family it's just too much, right? You know, first they took well, first they you know, what we went through with Sierra. And then when Sierra was good, that was salvaged. And they destroyed her. And then, you know, government took him more Andre it destroyed the family even more and then they went after John right it destroyed the family even more so much so that Shema ended up being an idiot herself people and made the wrong choice in a guy that she should never have been dating in the first place I don't know what she was trying to prove and then when she did finally leave him he came back and fucking killed her with his with his sister and the government props it up the government condones it because with that dead body, you know, she made his dead body, they made lots of money between themselves as workers. Huh? It's all, it was all public, it was all public employees, people, that did that. The cops, they're paid by the government. The coroner, paid by the government. All those healthcare staff members working at the, wherever, wherever, all paid by the government, people. Every last one of them. Same thing with Sierra. When they lured Sierra to her death, they prepped her, made her think she wasn't coming back, so that she was, you know, just whatever. They, there's something wrong with the government workers these days. And it took an effect on my kids. Got Shemay murdered. Where Tisha just wants to run away and abandon everybody. As if that's going to make her feel good because she's going to be sitting on a wad of money. Wherever the fuck she thinks she's going to go find this money. Like, right? As we've got the morphodite running through the yard, killing this and killing that. Right? When she's not doing her little fucking subliminal messaging on YouTube. As YouTube props her up. Because YouTube takes their money from the government. Like when they took down the six videos right before court, people. 
right? All Uncle John related, Shimei related, that's what they did. YouTube just didn't randomly go in there and take down six videos right before court. Fuck no. They were looking for specific things. Yeah. To hide the truth. To cover their asses. So they could keep destroying people's lives. And Tisha is one of them. And she doesn't realize she just... Uh, I don't know, people... Anyway, Amari went to his appointment today. I've been working on this. I, I blew out a computer. Do you see that computer? <laughs> I ruined it. I have to get it reformatted by a professional. Anyway, this is to, to start dealing with these. This is a, you can record onto a program. That's why it's like this, okay? And you can DJ with this as well. Right, but I already have turntables for DJing. I bought it specifically for what I'm good because I got tons of records, and <coughs> I don't know. I deleted a program from this other computer <coughs> because I installed a program, if I remember correctly. At least I thought it was in that one. For all I know, it could have been in that one over there. No, I think it was this one. So I went to go on and install it, and because it was a Roxio, I installed everything. But I think. The person who worked on that computer for me in installed a Roxio point seven point seven oh or whatever <coughs> because this that computer can burn DVDs, right? So I deleted all that. I don't know. Nothing didn't. And I put these speakers in anyway. Long story short, I deleted all that, and then I I had these other speakers in there. That didn't work, so anyway, I tried to do system restore, and anyway, I can't even get the Windows Media Player to play now. <laughs> <coughs> so I brought out another computer that I bought at a thrift store, but this one needs to be reformatted too, right? <coughs> <coughs> Because I think it has a, I don't know, they they wiped it clean and they installed, I think, I think it's a Windows 7, but it, I guess it's not registered. So I get this little box coming up every now and then. It works fine though. I, I just played, a, a, I had to, because I plugged in those speakers and it didn't work. And I'm like, two speakers, two, two computers not working with speed oh no, no maybe there's something wrong with the speaker so I plugged in this little thing and now it works and now I'm kicking myself in the ass because I basically screwed up that computer to where I have to get it reformatted now <laughs> not today but that will be another day Shima has supplied 250 ambulances and 500 EMTs to help respond. So, speaker speaker All seems right. to be working. These are Sierra's uh, recording videos. This is probably the coroner okay. after they did their fake forensic autopsy. Okay. Anyway, people. Yeah. Autopsy. What is that supposed to mean? Right. Okay. Right. So anyway, we know the whole thing was a fake. Police never did come back and tell me what they were doing with their investigation and the result of it outside of they let the one that they were investigating for quote unquote murder to identify Sierra so that they could keep us outside. Okay, so we know my life is fucked up, people, right? We know that whatever's been going on has affected my life <laughs> and my, my remaining kids and my dead kids. And, of course, Uncle John is dead, too, right? And he suffered. 
So, anyway, this doctor keeps pushing for hip surgery, saying, you know, because, you see, Amari likes to pull himself up. He has his own little way of grabbing and pulling, and, you know, and he sits up, and he's so proud of himself because he did it for himself, and, you know, if he wants to flip himself around and move, he does it, you know, but because he has to, you know, and his Aren't, legs are like this, right? You know, because of the zebra palsy people. So a doctor is saying, oh, you know, you need to really seriously think about getting him surgery. We'll book him in surgery now. It will take up to maybe a year. And you want to cut him open and then put him in these leg braces, spread eagle, for at least a year with no guarantee that he won't need surgery again with no guarantee that he won't get a severe infection that will require surgery, no guarantee that the doctor won't cut something that will bleed out and Amari could die on the operating table, right? All to prevent pain. But I, as the hip is pulling out more and more, because you know, Amari, Amari he's active, he pulls himself up, he a little bow-legged. Even when I put these ankle bracelet little things on, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't correct the bonus. That's for sure because these things only go up to here. Before they used to only go up to here, they increased it a bit, but it still doesn't prevent this part from bowing because he's naturally kind of bow-legged. See, that's that's going to be an issue. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use this computer. Hard to say. I need to get this one reformatted too. That's the way I bought it at the thrift store. Anyway, and, and you know, Tisha's telling me, "Well, I'm I'm moving away." Well, you're pushing me to sign him up for surgery, but yet you're telling me at the same time. You're moving out of the country. Like, have you ever stopped to think that when Mari has quote unquote surgery, that maybe you might need to look after him because I'm not going to be able to see wounds. I can do what I'm doing right now, people, you know, but, you know, I mean, like, he'll be in a cast and, you know, he could be like that for eight months to a year. And that's assuming that he doesn't develop an infection. And then they have to go in and operate again, people. And then after it's all said and done, after being like this spread, literally not being able to move, nothing, for over a year, right? You know, he starts moving around, and whatever that doctor did could pop. And we just start the process all over again. And I keep thinking of Tammy and her friend and the States, and... That she said, just put off surgery for as long as you can, and you know, like, don't fall for the old okie dokie and snipping this and snipping that because her son can't, you know, he can't bend his legs no more because what happens is they get tight underneath the knee, right, right, and the doctors they start snipping this and they start snipping that, and you know, by the time these kids are adults and lots of them they have problems, you know, like they. Just, She's like, <laughs> and of course I'm trying not to panic before it even happens, but it's so cold. It's just cold behavior. You know, it's not about, it's not about, seriously, it's not about I went to Alberta. It's about my mother died. My mother was beat to death by a Hindu. Okay, and then a week later, he moved in another woman into my mother's bed. Literally, people. And he gave my mother's jewelry and her fur coat, whatever she had in that house, because he sure in the hell didn't give it to me. He gave it to that new bitch that he moved into the, into the bed that he killed my mother in. Okay. Not a Punjabi, but a Hindu. Completely two different religions, but come from the same country with the same, same backward thinking. So when I went to Alberta and I left Victoria, it wasn't because I wanted to leave Victoria, people. There wasn't, 
nothing there for me. My family wasn't supportive of me. So I went to BC to try and start a company, and then I took my oldest son to Alberta to go see his father. I was only up in Alberta for five months. And I brought, I went, Uncle John came and got me and brought me back to Victoria. And I was gone for like two, two and a half years. But that was after my mother died. Leticia, what, you gonna go to freaking some little island, go live with Alex's grandparents because they're rich and have money? And the li living will be, what, cheap, cheap? Like, where do you plan on even going? There's only so many places they would go. And if that's why she's going, like, fuck. Don't expect me to be here when you get back. Amari will be gone, long gone by that time. If you think you can come back after you figured out that you made a mistake, you're not going to get us back because chances are I'll be dead by then or completely blind. If not both. Like, this shit's not funny, people. I don't like it when my daughter says shit like this to me. And then she tries to flip it on me and saying, I'm the one that fucking guilt trips her. Yeah, okay, as if I want this situation. Right? We can thank the government for that one with their doctor clinics hanging up the phone or telling their patients to take them to court. Okay? Not putting in freaking eye referrals when they're supposed to be. Right? Because they're too busy going around sabotaging the public for money. This is what I mean. Everybody wants fucking money and will do anything for it, it seems. Including your own kids. Even if it means moving out of the fucking country to have it. Well, I'm just stupid. There's no talking to her. Because she just... And I'm like, yeah, now I know why you and Shemay used to fight. Because you bullied Shemay. I didn't see it then, in those days. But now that I'm on the receiving end of it, fuck. I know exactly what Shemay was going through. You can't live to up to Tisha's expectations when she gets it in her head that she's right. <coughs> <clears throat> so, I'm trying not to worry for the day my remaining daughter basically abandons us. It's not about abandoning me. It's about abandoning Andre. It's about abandoning especially Amari. Yeah. As you got the Morphodite still running around with the brain munchers in her head getting more and more out of control plotting and scheming who she's going to kill next. Right? Serious people. So, what, she can get more money one way or another? You know what I'm saying? Like, even my son's girlfriend. Like, I don't get these young people. I, I Two days ago, I went downstairs. You know, we know what my son did. I hardly ever go down there anymore. As a matter of fact, I don't go down there because it's, you know, I get flack for making noise or trying to do something, even though I'm being expected to finish up doing what I need to do. So I avoid going down there. So, of course, I'm behind on what I need to do. And then when I finally do go down there, you know, like, I'm feeling insecure, people. Like, seriously, like, I'm trying to tell this girl, look, if I, something happens to me and, like, I'm fucking dead... Okay, because, like, I'm not too far from it, I don't think, honestly, with the way things are going and the way I be treated and my feelings around this this whole situation and what I know I'm up against in terms of the corruption in our community when it comes to the fucking Punjabis and the cops and the healthcare system and the government and just the whole nine yards, right? There's, you know, Shemay didn't kill herself. Sierra sure in hell didn't lure herself off to some fucking John Hart's house and kill herself with a bunch of cops standing on guard for two hours as they were running the family away and preventing them from identifying Sierra. Like I said, I'll never know if she was alive or dead behind that door because of dirty fucking filthy cops, people. That's just the, that's the reality of it, okay? You, this shit don't leave me. And then I come into contact with uppity up, oh, well, I don't got time for you. Mm -mm. Oh, sure, I'll take what you give me if only if I want it, though. If I don't want it, I won't take it. Right. And being that you're taking up my time, you know, right. I don't want to talk to you tomorrow because I'm busy. Yeah. Well, as if I'm not busy, 
but I gotta walk around in eggshells in my own fucking house. Basically. If I'm not walking around eggshells around my own fucking daughter now. Because she's leaving. You know? Yeah, well, just let me know when you're leaving. Fuck. And, like, seriously, if it comes to that, people, and I can't look after Amari, I'll just put him in foster care. And I will fight tooth and nail to make sure that that fucking Morphodite and her extended family won't get him. Okay? Because they don't deserve to have him. Because they abandoned him a long time ago. Tisha hasn't abandoned Amari yet. She wants to run away from her problems. She thinks leaving the country will solve her problems. Perhaps she'll solve some problems, but whatever problems that she thinks she's going to solve, some of those problems are going to come back and fucking haunt her. Unless, of course, there's just something inside of her that's just non-functional anymore because of what this British Columbia Canadian government has done to my family for a period of years in terms of with their gang stalking techniques and they're picking off one here, injuring Amari over there, right? And then just, you know, just just using time as their weapon. Well, we're going to have to operate. We're going to have to operate. You better talk, talk to your mom. And, you know, you can, you can put Amari on the waiting list now. And, you know, if she still doesn't want to do it, you know, you know, one month before surgery, you can cancel it then because at least then, you know, he's booked in. Well, yeah, in about a year from now, I probably won't be able to see a fucking thing. Okay, because these doctors that I'm dealing with personally make me feel like fucking shit. Okay, in terms of whatever medications they've been giving me for the last six months or five months or whatever it is that I've been using this shit on with this crap two times, three times a day. It's been making me so, so, so sick. So sick, you don't even know. Sleeping for hours, right? Dizzy. Dizzy. Why? Why? Well, because of this. Okay, he changed one one drop, so I just started using it this morning. We'll see. We'll see if 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 over the next little while, I'm not so dizzy and tired. I actually have a bit of energy right now. That's why I'm doing this. But as soon as Tisha starts talking, and she's talking to me about this on the fucking phone while she's at the hospital. Well, I'm leaving the country. As soon as I move out of that apartment, I'm gone. You don't expect me to be around to help you. Well, what the fuck am I supposed to do then? Like seriously, like why the f I told her long I told her a month ago. It's like I lost another like I don't even have a daughter in you the way you act and carry on sometimes. But it's that generation people. It's that generation. I tell I try and you know, I go downstairs finally after fucking a month of staying out of that place. Right? I have to do what I got to do. To hell with it. I go down there. You know, my son's girlfriend's down there. Like, what the fuck? Okay, so whatever. You know, and, I, and then I'm like, okay, well, here's a good time to talk about. Well, you know, if you don't know anything about home canning, here, here's, you know, information on the fly. And, you know, I told her this, told her that. And, you know, going back and forth. And I, I gave her... Uh, a container full of uh, wood bobbins that have thread on them and you know I offered her a air purifier which I gave to her yesterday for downstairs because you know it gets musty right and just whatever like I'm being nice I'm being fucking nice I I'm being nice and then I have to take some jars downstairs tomorrow yesterday I said, Andre, take these jars for me. I only planned on being down there for a little while. Because I wasn't too sure what was going to happen today. He goes downstairs, he comes back up, and he says, well, Marina says she doesn't want to talk to you today. She's busy. Leave her alone. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, okay. Like, fuck. I give you shit. I talk nice to you. I compliment you with whatever it was that you were sewing. I know. I try and... You know, I, I told her I, I'd rather have my daughter than that room with food in it. I'd rather have Shemay. So here's a, a, a girl standing there that's with my son that technically kind of is like a daughter-in-law to me. It just... It's like Tisha. Go away. Leave me alone. Don't bother me. I'm busy. I'm busy. I got more important things to do. I got to make money. I gotta do this, I gotta just, you're, it, it, just fuck off, go away, don't, don't waste my time, don't, nothing, I'm not here to help you, I'm here to just make myself better, with my life, yeah, we know how, how that all unfolded now, don't we, so, 
So now I want to cry. Cry over something that hasn't even happened yet. Whether it's Amari's hips, because I'll tell you people, once they cut into Amari and they got him like this, as a matter of fact, that doctor wants me to start putting him in these fucking leg braces at night for eight, nine hours, where he's like completely like this, and he can't move. He's on his back, and he can't move. And I'm telling you, when I tried to use that before, as soon as he seen me coming with them, he was, eh, 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 just, okay? As if I'm going to start fighting with Amari, Right? And even then, it won't be enough, because it's just to slow down the hip coming out of the socket, apparently. They've been wanting to cut into Omari from the moment that they injured him, people. They just passed the kid around between themselves, that's all, with their whatever. But they, none of them, not one of them, acknowledge how he was injured. Because that would be too much like truth. And then maybe the government would have to go in there and make sure that these fucking doctors, whether they're Punjabis or not, because it was a Punjabi who delivered Amari. How convenient. It was a Punjabi who illegally harvested Shemay's organs. How convenient. Right. It was a Punjabi that put two bottles of fucking freezing agent into my eyes. And then by the time I got to the car, I was spitting out big goobs, gobs of God knows what, glowing green under the sun. Okay, I'm just saying. Now, mind you, Dr. Fasinski, who said, take me to court, is a Ukrainian. But Ukrainians are fucking racist. That I know, because I'm Ukrainian, and I know what my extended family is like. And that's why I don't associate with them. So, therefore, that would make, actually, Dr. Vysinski very fucking um, racist. And th that's why he's trying to protect my half-black daughter's medical files from coming to the surface. Because he fucking knows there's some funky shit in there with me medical negligence from a doctor's perspective. In terms of, if Shemay is coming to you saying, well, I can't sleep because her boyfriend is fucking smacking on her, right? Oh, it was just in play. But whatever right it's not the point or you know he wouldn't quit selling drugs and he was stressing her out and you know and just who knows right and he she going to the doctor saying i can't sleep and he you know but i'm pregnant like what you know because they, how you feeling well i can't sleep whoa, 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 whoa oh and the doctor prescribes sleeping pills knowing that she's pregnant well don't you think that's a fucking setup fucking right it's a setup i told her not to take them you're not supposed to take sleeping pills Oh, the doctor just said, I, well, once, you know, just once in a while. I said, she may don't take them. Well, she said she didn't, so well. The point is, is they knew she was targeted. You see, that's the thing, people. She was targeted through the healthcare system, through the medical clinic and through the prenatal clinic. Right? Nobody knew Amari was injured because... When you take the baby in for their checkups, I mean, they're supposed to notice floppy floppy baby syndrome, but notice how nobody in that fucking clinic noticed that there was something wrong with Mari until the seven-month mark after Tisha and I really had to get up on it. And even then, Shimei was taking Amari at four months old with his cross eyes, asking the doctor what was wrong with him. And the doctor was still negligent and refused to acknowledge the floppy baby syndrome to which any doctor in that clinic would have known. But because her file was fucking flagged and they knew that he was injured at the time of his birth, they ignored it because they knew it was just a matter of time before they could plug him into this research study where they put him into these braces for, you know, years and 18 years they wanted him like this for 18 years of his life people and then still give him fucking hip surgery okay yeah okay with the prospect of having to have surgery again because the pin snapped off and they needed to fuse it back on or the bones didn't heal properly and they needed to go in there and do something, or he got an infection, almost died, and they had to go in there and clean it out if they didn't fucking kill him when he was on the table by cutting a major blood artery. 
that all that loot and, and, and of course the government isn't responsible for that because the government doesn't pay these doctors to do this shit as a matter of fact I don't even know why we have a government these government pay th th these doctors they all pay themselves all right, because one's connected to Fraser Health Authority, the next one's connected to the Island Health Authority, Vancouver Health Authority, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's the government that pays each and every fucking employee when it relates to a government worker, that is. So, it makes me want to die when I think of the pain that my grandson's going to be coming into because of negligence from doctors as they speak with forked tongue saying let us help you yeah okay they don't talk about hip replacement I tried to talk talk to Tisha about this right like why does this doctor never talk about hip replacement you know because he comes with rude lewd rudeness they well if his hip pops out and there's no cartilage, the only thing I can do is cut off the bone and throw it in the garbage can. That's what he says. That's a professional doctor talking to somebody that's like me, right? Well, we're just going to cut off the bone and throw it in the garbage. No, motherfucker. You're going to cut off the bone and scoop it up from wherever you put it in, and you're going to take it home and make yourself some fucking soup, okay? That's what you're going to do. You're not going to throw out a good bone in the garbage. Fuck no. You're going to make your money on it. Whether you fucking eat the soup yourself or whether you freaking grab the bone for something else. Who knows? So stop lying. You know? Why are you being so crass about it? You just scare me. That, yeah, just, yeah, okay. I've been scared for a long time, people. Because of public union workers. Okay. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Yeah. And like I, I, I don't, I, I give up on young people. Like they're so fucking uh, me, 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 me. Not that it's never been not a me, 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 me world, because it has been. But it's like ridiculous now. So anyway, that's what's going on. Tish is moving away. She's making plans to leave the country. Go to some fucking island with a volcano on it. Huh. Yeah, okay. So she can go look after old people. What a joke. Because there's only so many places she would fucking go. You will look after people that you don't even know. Just so that you think that you can get a better life. And get away from fucking Canada. With all its corruption. As you literally abandon your elderly mother. And orphan nephews. Yeah, okay. And the thing is, there's no talking to her. None. Because if I say it to her like that, Oh, you're just trying to make me feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, well, what else am I supposed to say? Good luck? God bless? Have fun? Yeah, okay. I'd rather my daughter, Shimei, back, and Sierra, any day, than to be in this fucking miserable fucking world that I live in right now. Okay. Seriously. You don't even know. The ones that actually fucking help me are the ones that fucking are dead. How about that? You notice how they took out the ones that... You know, I know Sierra wasn't perfect. <coughs> but at least she tried to fucking help me. Okay? She, I didn't have to ask her. She just came and fucking started helping me. Okay? She liked to clean and cook and stuff like that. eh? Right. But the government took care of that. They didn't want her fucking helping me. So they kept her strung out in the fucking streets. So they come back with their stupid, funky, 
fake investigation, so they had an excuse to cut her open and take out her organs. I still don't, to this day, believe that she's in that no-name fucking coffin that they put her in. Nope. Sierra is missing in action. Just like Shimei. I don't believe Shimei's body is in that fucking urn. Nope. I do believe we have skinwalkers. That's why some of them, when you do exposures on these things, they come out completely freaking white. motherboards in their hair or like uh, Dr. Bonnie Henry aka Dr. God, Dr. Death whatever she is to you so with individuals like that walking this planet do you honestly think that Amari will ever be safe and have a good life? Hell no never so for that I cry every day you just don't see it. And then I got these young people just rubbing it in. Because for some reason they're invincible. Right? 